Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel, Made You Book. My name's Gretchen and today I'm going to be doing a review of Fresh Water for Flowers by Valerie Perron and this was translated from the French by Hildegard Serrell. So this book was actually, I read because of Scott from Gunpowder Fiction and Plot uh, this is for his Patreon book club, and I haven't, uh, we haven't had the book club meeting yet, but I really wanted to record this video because everything is still fresh in my mind, and I wanted to make sure I got everything out that I wanted to talk about um, so that I didn't forget anything when I would film the review later. So this book, I... I'm actually really surprised at how much I enjoyed it. So why I say that is, as I started to read it, I was very intrigued. I was interested in what was happening, but I just kept thinking to myself, this is going to be one of those flowery kind of um, feel good, only purpose was to make you cry, kind of, and I hate this term, but chiclet book. And I was pleasantly surprised that there was so much depth to this book, and there were so many things that were going on in it that really made this book so powerful and really, really compelling. And what I will say before we get into too much is that I actually, I think I read this book too fast because it's a pretty decent sized book. It's uh, 474 pages and I was so engrossed with the story and I found it to be so interesting and I kept going and going and going. And during that time, I was just, you know, consuming it so quickly that I didn't really take the time to think about what was happening or let the moment of the story kind of ruminate and sink in and once I finished the book, that's when all of those pieces started to come together for me. And I really started to analyze the book and I really started to think about all of the emotions and all of the, the feelings and relatable things that happened in this book that truly made it stand apart from so many other books that I've read with similar kind of subject matter. Now this does have a very, it, I say similar subject matter, not in the sense that it has a common plot. It's a very unique plot, but it, it covers a lot of the same types of themes that a lot of literary fiction contemporary fiction books follow. And I I really enjoyed it. And the more that I think about it, the more I appreciate the book for what it is and, and how it made me feel. So this particular book, it follows our main character. Her name is Violette Toussaint. And she is a caretaker at a cemetery. And one day, like at the beginning, we don't have obviously much of her backstory. We don't know too much about her at the time. But one day while she is tending to the cemetery, she gets a visit from a man. His name is uh, Julian Soul, And he has his mother's ashes with him. And he's looking for a specific grave to this man that he doesn't know, but it was his mother's dying wish that she be um, laid to rest 
with this particular man. So the story is kind of a mystery for us finding out what it is that the stranger meant to his mother. And then we start to learn the backstory of that story um, through her journals. Um, Julian, Julian uh, provides his mother's journals to Violette and um, she reads those and learns what the story is behind it. Um, and it turned out to be this immense love affair, which was really fun to read about. Um, and it was particularly sad, but it was also such a, a fun, happy story too. Like I found very much joy in, in reading about their romance and, um, and also about her as a woman and being Julian's mom and everything. So that was a really uh, fun part of the story. So that's kind of one of the subplots that's going on. And then of course we have Violette who has a past of her own um, and it's a very sad past. Um, we learn how she comes to be the caretaker at the cemetery. Uh, we learn about her um, previous marriage. Um, well, I say previous marriage. She's technically still married uh, to a man named Philippe Toussaint and um, she has a child um, called uh, Leo or, or Leonid um, with Philippe and we learn about them as a family and her relationship with her daughter um, and then kind of how um, you know, she comes to, um, kind of fall out of love with her husband and her husband ultimately, um, you know, he, he eventually leaves. Now, this book is going to be very difficult not to get into spoilers and, I may have already given some of the things away, but we find out these things very early um, about her and her husband and, and no longer um, being with him. But learning about her relationship with him and then also the fates of her and her husband and her child um, is so beautifully written and it's tragic and it's just, it's tough to read at times. Um, uh, Violette has not led an easy life and it always seems like she has something working against her, but she is constantly just happy and excited exuding joy and she is such um a, a source of solace for so many people that are in her life um we'd learn about the care other uh fixtures at the cemetery like the grave digger and um you know the the groundskeeper and uh, like everything and they're a oh there's also a priest as well and it's a it's an eclectic bunch of characters, but they it's kind of like a found family type uh, situation as well. And we learn a little bit about each of them, and um, it's just a it's just a really wholesome, beautiful, just lovely story that has so many different layers to it. And it is much more complex than everything that is on the surface. Now, one of the major things that happens in this book is very tragic and it changes the, it, it changes the life of, um, Violette and her husband forever. And it's also about grief and, um, redemption and, 
getting through the worst parts of your life, but still being able to remain positive and hopeful that there is still something good in your future. And I think that um, the author did a, a wonderful job of constantly, even in the darkest parts of this book, or the saddest parts of this book, there was always that feeling of hope. And I just really appreciated, I really appreciated that because obviously when there are people that are going through horrible things in life, it's very difficult, or I should say, it's very easy to let those difficulties get you down and kind of dampen your light and kind of squash your spirit. But this uh, Violette character, she was not going to let that happen. And she found such uh, purpose in being the caretaker for the cemetery and knowing um, that all of the the residents, for lack of a better term, um, within the cemetery were were there for her and they helped her heal from her own personal tragedies. And, you know, she took care of them, but they, in a sense, took care of her um, and helped her heal. And we also learn about the relationship that develops between Violette and Julianne. And it's just a really nice story. Um, I hope I'm selling it because it definitely wasn't what I was expecting. Like I said, I thought that this was going to be a very superficial, everything on the surface kind of book that didn't really give you too much to think about or consider. But I was very, very wrong about this. Uh, there were so many things or so many times in this book where there were things that happened that later when I went back to start to think about it, what I had read, I started to think about how would I have handled that situation? Would I have handled it with grace? Would I have, um, you know, fallen down and had not been able to get back up? Like what would I have done? And I love books that kind of make you contemplate on you as a person and how you would respond to certain situations and how you would cope if the world seemed to be against you and everything was crumbling around you. Would you be able to be a light still in this world? Or would you become so sad and depressed that you weren't able to find any beauty in the world anymore? And yeah, I, I really enjoyed this. I think uh, what I will actually do at some point in time, I have so much to read right now that is a priority. I probably won't get to it anytime soon, but I would love to give this a reread because like I said, I read it fast because I was so engrossed with the story and I really didn't take the time to kind of analyze and think about things as I was going um, it all, like all of those feelings came after I finished when I started to think about everything. So I would really enjoy a reread of this potentially to see what else I missed or, you know, if there was anything else that really impacted me or could have impacted me that I just, you know, kind of maybe skimmed through or read so fast that I didn't fully absorb it. I'm really looking forward to talking about this in um, Scott's book club. I am not, uh, so believe it or not, like I review books, but I have never really belonged to 
a formal book club where we actually discuss the books. Like I've been a part of book clubs before, but the last thing that we do is talk about the books. Like if you know, you know, I'm, I'm sure we've all had a book club like that at one point in time, but I'm really keen to dissect this and see what other, um, other readers thought of this. Uh, I will say that one of the things that I thought is that obviously uh, Valerie Perron is a woman and she wrote a book that has a woman or a female main character and the book does to me seem very feminine and it has very feminine themes and it has a lot of um, female emotions and you know we're talking about a mother and we're talking about a wife that was going through um, a difficult time in a relationship so I'm really curious to see it, what the men thought of this book and if they related to it at all. Um, I was definitely um, team Julian. Like I really did not like her husband, uh, Philippe Toussaint at all. Um, and I'm curious to see if maybe the men may, might have been more sympathetic. Um, I can understand how they could be. Um, we do learn a lot about Philippe's character as well and why he kind of did the things that he did. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm really curious to see what the other uh, book club members thought about this. And if um, if you've ever read anything uh, by Valerie Perron. I think she has, I know there's another book out there called Three. And the only reason that I know about this, like this was on my radar uh, prior to it being um, chosen for the book club, mainly because it's a Europa edition um, and it's translated fiction. And you know how I feel about both of those. They're like top tiers, like some of my absolute favorites. I know if I'm reading an, a Europa edition, um, I am definitely going to enjoy it. Um, I don't think I've ever not finished a Europa book, and for the most part, I have enjoyed them. So I'm really um, curious to, to read her other book. I think she has one called Three, and there may be another but really enjoyed this. I think that um, there is a definitely a, a big audience out there. Um, it is an international bestseller. Like I think it says 1 million copies were sold. So it's very popular um, in Europe. Um, it was long listed for the Dublin Literary Award. Um, and it has like a lot of um, buzz on the back about um, you know, what a great book, um, it is. And, and I, I fully agree. Um, it was definitely worth my time. I think that sometimes when you pick up books that are, you know, creeping toward 500 pages or over, they can be a little daunting because you want to make sure that there's a payoff at the end. And for me, there was definitely a payoff I I felt like this in this instance everything was right with the world at the end of the book everything was tied up in a little bow I really didn't have any questions um uh, like I, I really didn't have any like what if questions or like what happened I guess I did have some questions about why some of the characters did what they did and what their intention was. But upon reflection, I feel pretty comfortable with my interpretation of it and what I thought happened. So, so yeah, I, I haven't read a book in a while where I have had that level of comfort with everything just being kind of tidied up at the end and not, um, not spending time after the book thinking about what 
happened or what was that ending, but being able to take time to think about the book for what it was and what it was saying and enjoy it for all of those reasons. So um, I'm curious if any of you have read this book or um, maybe you have read one of her other books, um, if there are any other um, kind of uh, French maybe romantic type of books that you have read that uh, kind of fit that bill. Um, there, I wish that I could think of it, but her writing reminds me so much of another author and I just cannot put my finger on it. Um, if I remember, I'll put it in the comments, but um, yeah, so definitely worth a read. Let me know if you've read it, what your thoughts are. Are there any, what I'd really like to know is why I'm holding off on a reread is uh, I have so many books that I am looking forward to getting to by the end of the year. And I am honestly feeling a little bit overwhelmed because I want to read them all, but I don't know. <laughs> if I'm going to have a chance to. Um, so I have to be really particular about what I want to prioritize. So I'm curious what those books might be for you. Are there any that you absolutely feel or want to finish um, as we Oh my gosh, we're all, we're almost into November. I can't believe it. But, but yeah, let me know. And until next time, we'll talk later. Bye.